Welcome back. Before we cover lesson 1-2 on how business activities change the accounting equation, just a quick review from section 1-1. We talked about what accounting is, and accounting is really planning, recording, analyzing, and interpreting financial information. The role of accounting is to record and report all of that in a financial statement so that it can be used for, by stakeholders to make decisions and to measure performance of a business. And then finally, we talked about the net worth statement, which was looking at personal and individuals' assets, the things they own minus their liabilities, the things that they owe to get to their net worth. So with that said, I'm going to do section 1-2, and it's going to be an awful lot of definitions. So let's just start talking about those. So first off, a business performs an activity for a fee, and this is considered a service business. There are also merchandising businesses that buy products and resell them at a higher price, and then there's manufacturing businesses that buy different um, inputs or materials, assembles them, add value to them, and then sells them. So we're doing a service business, which is activity for a fee. Then there is something called a sole proprietorship, which I touched on in the first section. So a sole proprietorship is owned by just one person. And a partnership is two or more people, and then a corporation can be an unlimited number of people that own it. So for this trimester, we're going to do a proprietorship, and then next trimester, we'll do a partnership. This trimester, service business. Next trimester, a merchandising business. And then the last definition there is a business plan, which is a written document describing the nature of how a business works. And that business plan can be used for a lot of different things, but typically if they're trying to get investors or loans, they would provide that to the investor or the bank loan officer to get that. The next thing, which is probably way more important in my opinion, is the accounting standards and rules. So these are really very important. Um, it's how we apply and how we know what to do in accounting. So it is called generally accepted accounting principles, or GAAP is what we say, GAAP. And you'll hear me call it GAAP all the time. I never use generally accepted accounting principles. So. Just like when you first start to drive, it's important that you know the rules to apply. It's important you understand GAP as well. So when I drive, I know that if it's a red light, I stop. I know if it's a green light, I go. And I know if it's yellow, it's caution and I'm to clear the intersection and move on. So the reason this is important in driving is so we don't all crash and burn into each other and the reason we follow gap is for the same reason so that things don't crash and burn and we do something we're not supposed to so there are various examples uh, of gap concepts that i want you to write down in your notes the first one that i want you to put under gap is called unit of measurement and this is one of them that you had when you were working on the accounting concept card so unit of measurement says the financial reports of a business can be clearly stated and understood in numbers that have comparable values if i were putting that in layman's terms i would just say i'm reporting in u.s dollars everything that i put in a financial statement will be in U.S. dollars. I won't have some in dollars, some in yen, something like that. So it's all in a consistent unit of measurement. 
So that's your first concept I want you to write down and know. The second one is business entity, E-N-T-I-T-Y, business entity concept. And this says that businesses' financial info is recorded and reported separately from the owner's personal financial information. So I talked about how we looked at individuals and their personal net worth statement, and then we're looking at businesses and their equity and their financial statements. But if I own a business, what I do with my personal assets needs to be kept separate from what my business that I own does with their assets. So if I buy something, um, advertising, if I use the business's assets to buy that, it's the business's transaction. If I use my own to buy it for my own personal use, it's my personal net worth statement that's affected. So I need to keep everything the business does separate from the owners. And again, in this class, we're going to focus on what the business is doing, and that's what we care about. So continuing on with some more definitions and things that matter. So the accounting equation. There is literally one thing that I will not ever let a student walk out of my room without knowing at the end of the trimester, and that's what the accounting equation is. It is the most essential thing that you understand, because if you understand that, you can apply almost any complex accounting concept as long as you understand that. It is very simple. It is very important, and I care enough that it will always be the first question that I give you on most quizzes and most cumulative parts of the test. It'll be the first question on the final exam. It is always what I want to make sure that you know. So when we take the cumulative part of a test every chapter, because I will always give you five questions that are from the entire trimester, not just the chapter we're working on, that first question is going to be, what the accounting equation is. So we'll get to what the equation is, but we have to define some things first. So the first thing we want to talk about is what equities are, and these are the rights to the assets of the business. So I have all these assets. If my business went under, who has the rights to those assets? Okay, and the amount remaining after all the liabilities are subtracted from assets is something called the owner's equity. It's the owner's right to those assets. We have creditors who are the ones we owe money to, the liabilities, and they have a claim to the assets first. So I have this big bucket of assets. Who gets first dibs? I think of it as dibs. It's whoever our liabilities are to, so banks and vendors and people like that. So they get first dibs when the assets are all sold for cash. They get the cash first. And then what's remaining after we settled that is the owner's claim or the owner's right to those assets. That's owner's equity. And the equation which shows this relationship is the accounting equation. Okay, so that equation is here. It is assets equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. So ALO is how most people remember it. A for assets, L for liabilities, and OE for owner's equity. So assets equals the liabilities and the owner's equity. And again, let's just define some of these things. So assets are things we own. Or they have value. Okay. Liabilities are things we owe to creditors. So we owe. And those creditors have the right. Creditors' rights to assets. Okay. The owner's equity 
is the difference between assets and liabilities. Let me spell it. And it is the owner claim or rights to assets. Okay. Um, let me just do that for you. So this is just a matter of algebra that if I subtracted liabilities from both sides of the equation, I'd have assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. Okay. So that's what owner's equity is. That's what I would know right now related to this accounting equation. And the left side of the equation, which is the assets, has to equal the right side of the equation, just algebraically. We know that, okay? So that's something we're going to check when we get to transactions and are looking at that. So kind of ignore this heading on here, but let's define just a few more things. So we are going to work with a lot of transactions during the trimester. So any activity that changes an asset, changes the liability, or changes owner's equity is a transaction. So that activity either increases or decreases one of those things. That's a transaction, an exchange of value. The next one is something called an account, and that is a record that summarizes every transaction that pertains to a single item. So we have an account called cash. Every time I receive cash, it's affected. Every time I pay cash, it's affected. So every transaction that happened that I pay or receive cash, I'm going to summarize it in an account called cash, and its title, account title, is cash. And then the difference between all those increases and decreases when I received and I paid for cash is called an account balance, and we'll learn how to compute those. And then finally, speaking about a very specific account, anything related to the owner and their equity in the business is summarized in an account called capital. Okay, so capital has any time that an owner invests or an owner withdraws. So you've gotten a lot of different definitions in section 1-2 so far, and we have talked about the accounting equation. The thing that I will be quizzing you when I see you next, that I will always ask you about almost always as a first question on anything I'm asking you. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, ALO. Next, what we're going to do is start to look, though, at some of these transactions then and how they affect the accounting equation. But before we do that, I want you to set up in your notes this little handout here that has all of the accounts and transaction numbers across the top. So it really looks like this. So put this across the top. I'm going to have different transactions here. And you're starting with a beginning balance of zero and put all of this in. And we will talk about what all this means. But we're going to have transaction one, two, three, four, five. And this NB stands for new balance, if you want to write that out. So beginning balance, new balance when we're doing this. 